YouTube, what's going on? It's Matty B. Thank you guys for watching the channel. I really appreciate it. Today we're going to start up a new feature I'm going to do on the on my YouTube called Arena Crash Fail Reviews. Got a lot of big Arena Crash incidents and just all kinds of stuff over the last year or so. So I figured it'd be a pretty fun feature for you guys. I'm really not trying to make fun of these guys. I'm just trying to call it how I see it. And I'm even going to flame myself in this one big time too. So uh, before you guys comment hating and acting like I'm just hating on these guys, I'm just trying to provide some entertainment. I love these guys. They send it and I hope you guys enjoy. first video we're going to feature this week this is an instant classic one of my favorites on the tube it's actually not my video it's from high sided films called nitro arena cross moto adventure part one the stage is immediately set to deliver on this one we got the black kawasaki with the stick on number one we got concrete barriers right off the side of the track at what appears to be an outdoor local fair cross what the hell could go wrong out here and as you can see it's already begun my boy's struggling a little bit with, with the course we got to chop the throttle on the face of that jump and we do a little nose pick action but hey there's nothing to see here we're just we've just begun we really ain't worried about the rhythm that's just child's play we're coming up to the finish line with the yellow flag yeah we'll huck it front end high he goes full meteorologist just looking straight at the clouds what's today's weather brother i literally lands almost loops out almost rips the rear fender off and we stayed in it no choice after all that action, we go into the basic little sweeper. We do a 90-degree slide, both feet down. That's all right. We're distracted. We're just trying to remember if we put anybody in our will before we came out to this event because this one might be a death sentence. Now we got to shake off the arm pump. It's all right, brother. I've been there before all summer, as a matter of fact. Rails the bull turn, keeps the feet off the ground. I like to see it. Straight faces these two doubles as much as we possibly can with the wheelie out boner air combo. And then we come here, we got our guy on the finish line telling him, Yo, brother, get off the track. And according to the video, they actually kicked this dude out of the beginner class, which stop me if you think any differently, but this guy definitely looks like the dictionary definition of a beginner rider. But I guess you couldn't do the finish line double in the beginner class. So they said, You're moved on up, advanced C class, brother, get after it. So bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Bold strategy, Cotton, indeed. Now it's race time. Practice is over. We've been advanced. We're still facing into these doubles, though. We ain't trying to make it easy on ourselves, testing that Cowie A-Kit suspension. I'm sure it's straight for Mitch Payton. I mean, it's hard to argue with the accolades. My guy's number one, so he's clearly the defending champ, despite the fact that he's under some serious pressure from red spokes right behind him, trying to run him down. Here's what I like about this guy, though. He's learning. He's digging. Check him out. A little power slide in the berm that time. Double in was a little bit hairy, and then we get the second double, though. We weren't doing any of the facing. A little nose high on the first one, but as some of you guys may already know, it's in the contract. Now we're headed to the finish line. We're still launching it, and wow, my boy straight up stiff kitty. He does the mannequin. He doesn't move a muscle in the air. Lands a little OJ. We stay in it. This dude does not quit, and that's what I love about it. We got hard out here. These guys get knocked down seven times, get back up eight, and now he's even skimming the whoops better than I do. This dude is incredible. Headed into the rhythm section for the final time. Straight up greased it. Hit it perfect. I'm starting to think that everything's going to align for my guy, and he's really started to figure it out. But here's where disaster strikes. Checkered flag is out, and he straight up endos his brains out. I mean, this one, he had no chance of return. It was like he hit the kill switch on the face or something he endoed so bad. Gets completely pile-driven upon landing. And the worst part about it all is the dude was in full death endo, and he... Did not panic rev even a little bit. The bike was silent. He ended up getting power driven pretty bad. Hopefully he was able to get healed up and get back on the number one plate Kawasaki soon to defend his championship. And here's the raw video just so you guys can hear how quiet he was in the air. Next up, I'm going to teach you guys about a little place called Crashville. You're basically racing in a barn with flat turns, no room for anything. You, Pinocchio couldn't stand in the middle of the track and do a 360 without knocking his nose into something. But hey, that's what makes it great. We got no room for any activities. We got guys coming together, two piled up on one side, one stuck on the dirt mound on the other, tipping it down, tipping over. The dream's done. And post moto, the tempers are flaring. The race is already over, so we might as well get our words in. They're pissed. F you, no F you. Now we got one of the dads yelling at him, no F you. Now we got the other dad over here, no F all you guys. Don't tell my kid F you. I'll see you in the parking lot, buddy. We got fingers being pointed. Track crews having to intervene. 
like I said, tempers flare at Crashville every time, and fights come in all different shapes and sizes in that place. Sometimes it's kind of lame like this, where they just touch each other and give each other hugs. Sometimes we got to work through our displeasure immediately after a pro heat race with track crew involved. We even got other riders on the scene in the same class. Everybody comes out, come one, come all. Sometimes we just get down to business immediately post-race, right after the finish line where you pull off the track. We've even got a guy throwing roost trying to run his bike into everybody. And then here's the grand finale. Sometimes everybody just brawls. They come out of the stands, family, friends, cousins, brothers. They all get in the mix. Punches are thrown, cops are involved, but it's in the contract, baby. They don't call it a barnyard brawl for nothing. Everybody love everybody! Come on! Next up, we're back at Crashville, but the only thing this guy's going to be fighting is his machine in the dirt. We're out there in a t-shirt and khakis, and I don't really know how this guy's doing it. It's December. It's freezing out there. But he ain't scared of the weather or the riders. We do the bar turn case combo and just absolutely slam into half the pack, just throwing it right in there, dabbing it, taking the ACL with us, but we're not worried. It's D-class supremacy on the line here. A pile up we just avoided, intimidating them into the crash, and I'd probably blow the turn too if I had a guy in khakis with no fear running in on me into a corner in arena crash. Now we got his cousin in the blue jeans taking a soil sample and now they're locked into a heated battle and khakis has no fear whatsoever. Pretty much locks bars, jumps right into him, both feet come off, the seat hits him right in the ass and he stays in it. But unfortunately, these things come to an end eventually, and there it was. One-way trip to Indonesia, all expenses paid, first class, straight nose pick national, and front flips himself into the deck. But he got up, walked it off, and got back to the sin. No choice. Crashville isn't just for fights and crashes. It's also a place to make debuts. Here we got the 94 Ken Rocks, and you guys thought that his debut was at Anaheim 1 on the Suzuki? Nah, guess again. It was New Year's the week before at Crashville. And you guys thought the Suzukis were slow? Yeah, don't look at the dyno charts, man. Those things barked. The dude couldn't even hang on to it. We go from the wheelie, 180-degree slide-out combo. But this is why he came to Crashville, to work out the kinks before Anaheim 1. This next guy's footage comes from a couple of different locations, and man, this dude covered all the bases. First, we go straight backflip in the whoops. We lean back for a little bit of traction, and we hooked up just a little bit and went straight, yeah, backflip. The bike actually almost completed it, but unfortunately, it pile drives the ground straight back into a front flip back right side up, and even the flagger was hyped. Look at him. My dude's putting on a show for everybody. Now we're in Tennessee, new location, same deal. Front end's real high, and despite the fact that we were fully geared up at Crashville, it appears we've switched our strategy to go to the khaki pants jersey combo now we're into the whoops both feet off near death by whiskey throttle but we bounce off the wall back onto the track like nothing ever happened and check it out i mean i would have been gone at this point both feet are off he's almost whiskeyed slides it right in it was like nothing ever happened now it's race time we're coming out of the start and we're still staying with our trend of front end high i think that's kind of our thing come out a little bit sketchy and i don't even think my guy's wearing goggles we're trying to make sure the vis vision's good in the indoor events and our luck's finally about to run out we're into the whoops ejecto cedo front end tucks a little bit as we do our wheel tap that we're not qualified for on the way in front knives straight into the air it's like he no choice his way into a trampoline in the middle of the whoops this right here is what i love to see though that was a heavy crash and he gets up walks it off and he can head straight to the bar to go ahead and start drinking the pain away without a choice in the world now we're on to Motorama, and I have never seen an event like this in my life. It's the sketchiest track I've ever seen, and they put a full gate of quads out there. And as you can see in this video, it delivers every time. Coming right out of the gate, they got a set of rumble strips from where the rest of the track goes, and a couple guys get just a little sideways, and that's all it takes out here for melee to ensue. It's like they ran into a bunch of landmines, a bomb went off in the middle of the field, and quads just go flying. We got smoke everywhere, and only four guys out of ten even made it to the first turn out of that start. Clearly, quads and arena crash go together like peanut butter and dog crap but if you want your best chance possible at flipping your couch head to motorama This is one of the craziest crashes I've ever filmed. Kicker Arena Cross in Colorado. My guy comes off a little bit nose high and just completely leaves the chat. Take it away, Carrie. Jesus take the Carrie said it best. Jesus was the only person who had a chance at touching the wheel on this one. Straight boner air central lands and just literally takes the hands off. Like, I'm not sure what the strategy was here. I think he just comes off and realizes, oh, crap, I'm going down. I guess I'm just the passenger now. We'll see how this goes. And, man, he got out of it pretty good. I mean, he rides with no hands, ghost rides the whip for a while and gets off really lucky right on the backside of the berm. And 
he got up and got back in it. I was there. I saw it. This dude's a legend. A little loop out. Ghost riding the whip ain't going to keep him down. Next up, I think this is my favorite sea rider of all time. We got Pizza Man. My dude wears gear that just has slices of pizza all over it, and he is full send. He ain't scared of a damn thing. He always comes out of the gate with his legs all the way behind him like he's doing a Superman with them things flailing. Super aerodynamic, and whether he's coming into the turn first or 16th out of 15, he's going in there and sending it. As you can see right there, he sends it to the outside and just crashed all by himself. He's still all by himself, all alone on the track, and he goes almost for a wall smash just like yours truly, and the whoop are a bit of an Achilles heel for Pizza Man. He does the head bounce. That's kind of a consistent move for him. It, it kind of became his trademark throughout the series. That's just his move. And thanks to Pizza Man, we even got GoPro POV of the GoPro just absolutely eating the bar pad lap after lap. There you see face bounce and a bar twitch, and it doesn't stop us. It's in the contract. We're not worried at all. And then we got a battle to the death with my guy number 46. We're about to lock bars over the finish line. And I don't. These guys should not be trusting each other riding this close. But that's what makes the C-Class so entertaining. They're all out there doing stuff they shouldn't be and sending it like none other. And here we even got the face bounce in a rhythm section. The face bounce isn't just tied to the whoops. We can do it anywhere on the track. Slow-mo here. Straight two and a half over the tabletop and just bounce right off. But we get right back in it. Here we got number one duct tape going for blood on Pizza Man. Pushing him wide. Then we do the hybrid line in between the rhythms. Hop back in and then we just go right back off. I'm really not sure how he managed to pull this off. It was kind of impressive. As you can see, we double in. Everything looks good. Then we just get a little bit of pull to the left. Barely save that. Over the dirt mound. Pretty impressive. And then we go around the wall as well. We lose a couple spots. and. But unfortunately, as we all know, you only get away with living life on the edge but for so long. And that's what happens to Pizza Man here. The luck runs out. We go for a skim in the rhythm section. The whoops are in the next section, and we try to skim now. Straight up slams himself. It looks like he ripped both shoulders out of socket. He crashed so hard. But Pizza Man does stuff like this on a weekend basis, though, so this doesn't even phase him. There's a lot of talent in all these various arena crash series, but I don't know if I've ever met a combo like Pizza Man and his dad. They come to the track with a pit bike on top of a limo, and after our races were over, they were just driving around doing donuts in a limo with a pit bike on top. I've truly never seen anything like it when they came back in after they were done the pit bike was all almost all the way off the side of the limo and they didn't give a damn so pizza man i hope you're ready to shred 2023 2024 arena crash because we'll be in it grand finale for pizza man face bounce in the whoops whiskey throttle into the wall and we just bounce right back off of it it's incredible straight up double face bounce actually i didn't even notice whiskey straight bounce off the wall and just right back into the race and into the battle. 46 is trying to saw the front end off on the way in, so that probably distracted him. But Pizza Man pulled out of this move a lot better than the next guy I'm about to roast here in this next segment. Here we go, baby. The moment we've all been waiting for. Me roasting the hell out of myself. Got to be able to make fun of yourself and laugh at yourself a little bit every once in a while. No choice. Unfortunately, this one wasn't the funniest crash I've ever had. This one was pretty brutal. We're out at a local tri-state arena crash. Having actually the best race I've had in a long time. And unfortunately, it comes to an end. We get a little buck in the whoops and just no need to stop, dude. We'll just go straight, slam into the wall. And shoot, it's times like these where I wonder who even lets me out there with my bike. I mean, my pro card should have been revoked right there on the spot. Danger to myself, a danger to the wall. And there you see. I mean, I'm full-blown bucked, no feet. Luckily, we didn't whiskey throttle, just didn't have any time to stop and full Joe move. Slammed the wall, got knocked out, got burnt by the pipe. And tried my best to emulate the Kool-Aid man, but he breaks through those walls better than anybody I know, and I did not have it in me, so had no choice but to make a meme of it. And if smashing a wall wasn't humiliating enough, this one was. Spent a couple weeks in the hospital and got back out just to do this to myself. Went full Brandon's first race. Caught some traction where I wasn't expecting it. Did a nice little Larry Loop out face plant combo. And this is exactly what a loss of talent looks like. Just ask Squidward Tentacles. First, repeat after me. I have no talent. I have no talent final feature of the week and this is absolutely the picture of perseverance right here i have never seen somebody case a jump and get sketchy so many times just giddy up and get right back after it and i mean this is just straight groundhog day out here the guy just cases it time and time and time again even you see mechanic right there is telling my guy yo take it easy i mean this is in the free practice of arena crash and 
We're just casing lap after lap, getting bucked. This dude had my heart rate elevated, and all I was doing was watching in the stands and filming. Here we're going to try and get our K-Dub on for a little lane-to-lane -lane transfer. We barely made it to the other side of the double, almost hit another guy straight on. We managed to end up in a pile safe and sound all by ourselves, didn't take anybody else out. And I've got to give it to this guy, man. If I would have gotten this sketchy this many times on a jump like this, there ain't a chance in hell I'm still jumping it. And as a matter of fact, I'm probably just getting all the way out of the situation completely, and this guy just goes again and again. I swear to you all, these are all different attempts to this jump. Some of them look the same, but he's just trying again and again. And then this time we even go for the scrub. We're finally done with jumping in and we still get caught up on the hay bales and stuck. And honestly, this one was kind of hard to watch. I mean, regardless of doubling or singling, this thing was giving him fits all day long. Please stop this madness. Now we're on to the night show. Some some things have changed. Races have started. Fans have packed the stands, but some things remain the same. This guy casing the crap out of the catapult. There's another good knuckle on top, and here's our grand finale. We land off the side again. This is his eighth sketchy moment or crash, all off of one jump, all in one day. I didn't even put some of the ones I recorded in here, and more than anything, I just want to commend this guy for his send, because there ain't no way I would have lasted this long sending it knowing I was going to case something. Bravo, brother. That's a wrap on this week's episode. First ever one we've ever done. So hopefully they'll get a little bit better as we go. Going to try to pump out one of these per week on the channel. So um, if you guys have any good arena crash fails, crashes, fights, anything like that, that you want to see featured in here, please feel free to send it. I'd love to get some videos from you guys to um, do some commentary on. And thank you guys for watching the channel. I really appreciate it. And hope you guys enjoy. Catch you guys next time. No choice.